On this episode of Trying Something New, we meet up with Not A Clue. We met this awesome couple through Instagram. We have been following their journey since they bought a power catamaran about a year ago, and when we realized that we were both going to be in Fort Lauderdale at the same time, we knew we had to meet up. They blew us away with our first sailing trip on a 62-foot catamaran, where we met Captain Dominic from Premium Captains, who is amazing. We got to hang out with them at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, and they introduced us to their boat broker, Terry, from the infamous Just Catamarans. This couple is so cool that we wanted to make a video about them and tell their story. So here we go. Right. Oh, you can park underneath this bridge. There's actually a car park on the left. Oh, awesome. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's funny there's no cars. Nobody has a freaking car. Oh, no. All right, guys, we're here. Gearing up here for uh, a cool video that we're going to make. Got the keys. All right, so Casey and George, so they invited us down to their boat to check it out. Do a little tour and ask them any questions we want to ask and share it with you guys. So when you don't have a clue, you can meet not a clue. Rain clouds are starting to come in, so we'll see how interesting this gets. Wow, look at this beast master. Holy moly. Hi, What's guys. up, Casey? You made it before the rain. I know, huh? We're like, oh my god, we're all gonna be huddled up inside the to... oh. solo on the rain. Oh no. the rain. We gotta go inside, guys, quick! Oh my god! Hurry! <laughs> I know, right? What's that? And here it comes, guys. Here comes the rain again. <laughs> So here is a tour of George and Casey's Lagoon. Welcome, Welcome to Not a Clue. Clue. Come inside. Woo, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our living room area. Um, and I'll kind of tell you a little bit about what we did to each spot as we see it. So these um, cushions are actually painted. Um, I did all the pillows, tie-dyed them, whatever. And then we redid some of the curtains and things. Uh, we actually spray painted this vinyl. So it was um like a cream color i really hated the cream it was bad it was really bad and the cushions were the same color and we just needed something different so we thought it'd be a good refresher i'd never used a spray paint before but i taped off the whole boat you did it literally there? yeah i did it well you had to i couldn't get them off oh. they were like 5200 on so there was no way to get them off so i taped everything up spray painted those and they've been good ever since we've had them here for a year so cool. it's been good now we're in the kitchen. The galley, in boat terms. Thank you. <laughs> um, there's a lot of teak on this boat when we got it. So one of the things we did was we added the, the backsplash tile, which is a stick-on tile, which we just loved. We've got a magnetic spice rack for the spices, a magnetic knife rack, all the things, because of course when you're moving around on the boat, things slide around, so things are in baskets and tied back. We added a UV uh, water purifier for, our, for the water that we make, which is under the sink. Um, we did under counter fridge. And so are you guys happy with the space? Is there enough space for you guys? Because that's Absolutely. the thing everybody Yeah, you're yeah. right. There's not a lot of prep space, but you can actually put stuff above the uh, sink. And also we use this, which is our small chest freezer. We use yeah. this for preparation as well. I prefer this because for us, this is how we spend our time. Like George might be at the table while I'm making dinner or vice versa or whatever. So. Um, yeah, I think when there's two of you, you want to be in the same space as much as possible. Yeah. And I yeah. like the more open plan as much as you can get right. on the boat. So I, I think we prefer this. It's great for two. Yeah. I love the name of the boat. Tell me about what, where did this name come from? Mm -hmm. So when we first started, we had no idea what we were doing. We knew that we wanted an adventure. We wanted to try something different. We wanted to try something new, right? We thought that it was fitting for our journey, I guess. And we like puns. 
Yeah, and when you're nailing your good. boat, you'll go through all kinds of fun oh, puns. Oh, we went, it was like weeks of trying to decide what our boat name was. It's gotta be good. Well, it's, you know? Of course. It's gotta be good. Because when you pass by, everyone looks, what's the name? Yeah. And you know, it, the cooler it is, it's you like, can't ah. be the lame one where they're like, yeah, I guess. For us, it was not knowing anything about boating and then being able to somehow figure out how to do it and hopefully that might inspire mm-hmm. other people that were thinking of it because you can get in your comfort zone and you can get in your bubble and we just broke out of our bubble and it's been a year now. We love it. We're still learning. We still don't have a clue on a whole bunch of stuff, but we know way more than we did a year ago, and that's that's part of the journey. Mm-hmm. Okay, and our favorite luxury item, which I just think is a must-have, um, is a really good ice maker. Oh, of course. Because when you got that, it just it feels that's like it's another level. Huh? When it's, that yeah, is it's like gold level. in the Bahamas. <laughs> oh, <I can> imagine. <laughs> it's like, worth its weight in gold. It's just wonderful. Um, well, fruit flies are like mm. my worst oh, enemy yes. in the Bahamas. Oh my god. Oh, is it really so bad, bad over there? Yeah, well, and you have to wash every item that you bring into the boat. You have to take all of the um, paper off the cans so they don't get cockroach eggs and things like that. You have to wash, I know, it's gross. You have to wash all of your fruit and veggies like immediately when you bring them inside because you can get so much stuff because everything comes over on boats. So, this is our guest bedroom. Um, originally the boat was four cabins and this is one of the forward berths. It's called the V berth. You'll see because the way the mattress is shaped. So we put wallpaper on the back just for a little something. Yeah, it has its own bathroom here. Bathroom is called a wet head. So a wet head is a toilet that doubles as a shower so you can fold down the seat there and then you have um, the uh, faucet the handle comes out and that's a shower. All right, let's go check out this other V berth that they turned into something amazing here. Oh wow, yeah. this, so this was a bedroom. Yeah, what? so this was a bed. This is my favorite um, spot in the whole boat. I think this was the best conversion that we did. Yeah, it gave us a lot more space to do all of our storage and our provisioning. When we go, like when we do go to the Bahamas, this will have tons and tons of cans, all of our dry goods in it. This is Packed, typically. We're sort of running through everything right now. I'm trying to get rid of all of it because we're going to provision again in another another couple weeks. So these are notorious for leaking these seat really? patches and um, we actually need to get a new seal on them so I'm going to be doing that. That'll be a project I do next week is putting new seals on. Yeah. We thought about an RV very briefly mm-hmm. like that evening and we thought about traveling and maybe getting Airbnbs in different cities. And somehow I just think the idea was like, but what if we had a boat? And we went to the islands, because I've never been to the Bahamas or anything like that before. What if we did that? You know, what if, just, that seems so beyond reachable. Yeah. But then you start looking online and there's people that have done it and they've, you peel back the layers a little bit and then we just took it from there. And we reached out to a couple of people over here told them what we wanted to do and that begins your network and then that person refers you to another person Mm -hmm. and so on and it just helps you kind of break it down and take it step by step. We have a aft master cabin and like many catamarans the back of the two hulls is could be a cabin on each side but a little bit of a unique feature of our boat is those cabins actually had a shared wall so one of the things we were able to do uh, and what you see on the owner's version is remove that wall. So we'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, so I saw this. I saw this on Instagram, but I thought it was up top. I thought it was up oh. there. So this is our. What? <laughs> oh my god. This is our um, our master cabin. It stretches the wow. width of the almost the width of the whole boat. On the starboard side is Casey's side. So she has that bathroom where she can got all of her makeup and prepares and we've got a full length mirror on the back of the door. Insane. It's a very nice feature. You know, on a boat there isn't a lot of space to go around yeah. and this to have another room as well as a salon where you just feel like you can reach out. Yeah. This is next level here man. <laughs> we did alright. An hour after the boat arrived uh, the carpenter came over. He was a friend of a friend and he just got out his saw. He's like do you want to do this right now? So. I think we saw the boat at nine in the morning and by 10, this wall was already getting cut down. I'm usually quite precious about a new thing to me. I'm like, don't touch anything, don't. But it broke the seal a little bit. And after that, it was like a dam broken. And we've just been working on it ever since. And we're very proud of it. Man, I feel like this would be every big kid's dream because it feels like you're in a fort down here. 
a fort on a floating boat that you can go anywhere in the world you want and do anything you want. Make your own ice, make your own power. How much better does it get than that, guys? Come on, man. Yeah. All right, so they're gonna come in and see the bedroom for the first time, so I wanna get their reaction here. All right, guys, come on in, check it out. All right. Whoa! Whoa. Super fancy! This is so boat. Wow! Whoa. This is a I want to live here. I want to live with them. Just plenty of so we made our own owner's version. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, what do you think the biggest hurdle was moving onto a boat? Well, moving on is easy. We just showed up with our suitcases yeah. and started taking down the walls. <laughs> Living on a boat. I mean, we don't have a car anymore. Getting around Planning, can be a bit difficult. You need to be pretty yeah. organized. Thinking about everything a little bit differently. When you're living in the islands, it's a whole other ball game because now you're a self-contained unit. Whatever mm -hmm. food you've got on board, that's pretty much your food unless you catch it. Uh, the yeah. water, the water maker, solar, power. It's just, it's a floating RV. It's mm -hmm. an off-grid floating RV. Mm -hmm. and it's very, very different, but it comes with amazing rewards as well. We have eight 100 amp hour house batteries that give us 800 amp hours. Because with these kinds of batteries you can only drain them halfway. We've learned what our default usage is so we know over overnight we drop about 15-20% so we could do two two and a half nights. In theory we've just recently added a couple more solar panels so we have a total of a thousand watts which for us I think is the minimum that we would be able to survive on but we haven't actually tried it yet. We do have a generator as well of course but what does it feel like to like run off of solar? Is I like love cool it. Feeling? It's just being off grid is really something it's just so special because we, we eat from the ocean we get water from the ocean with our water maker and then you're getting power from the sun. I, it's just a this is amazing. Is that to start it up? That is, that allows us to take control. So we have two steering wheels. We have one up the top and we have one downstairs. What's that? That is where the radio handset goes. And then we have our autopilot controller there. Uh, the windlass. So that's the motor that lifts and drops the anchor. What do you think when you come up here and see all this stuff? It's cool. It's cool. Would you like to control a boat like this? Yeah. Do you think you can control a boat like this? Yeah. You think you can do it? Could you dock it and put it up to the dock without smashing the dock? Yeah. You could do it? No, yeah. we're Absolutely definitely not. at that level. We're yeah. definitely at that level where you could just get the boat yeah. started, you could get it off the dock, and you could go if I was sitting sick. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I could so. totally handle a boat in any of these riverways and call the bridges and do all yeah. that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. And we try to make a point to do that too and show people that it isn't, you know, mm -hmm. that there aren't those roles because oftentimes boats are much more of a male dominated industry, of course. So then they see me docking and they're like, what? Oh, that was sister! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They call this a Bahamian TV. Oh my god, see that. Pick this up at Sailor Man, like it's all shallow. Oh my god. That is You're like, oh, I want to see all the fish. Oh, no way! Oh, That's wow. hysterical. But we do very much like <laughs> living on a power cat. We yeah. have some advantages of speed and just um, being less affected by the weather, obviously. We can go in a straight line from A to B. Yeah, but then the disadvantage are we don't have the range because we obviously have fuel. Um, and that makes it more expensive to run. Do you like it better when the ocean's warm? Do you like it better? One of our other wet hatches. Oh, wow, so yeah. anything that's kind of it'd be quite common to have these kinds of hatches. So yeah. and then this one. So this is where I keep all the spare parts and off canned food. But even then the tins will corrode, but hopefully not on the inside. Do you feel like you have enough storage space? Oh yeah, I think we yeah. We're because really it's not, it's not, it's not, oh my god! <laughs> what are some advice that you would give someone that has the this very beginning? With us? Okay, yeah. we were, I think ours first began when we found a good broker mm -hmm. and we that tried a couple important. of people. Yeah. We didn't know anybody in Fort Lauderdale and we lived on the west coast, now we're on the east coast. And we called up a couple and we said, Hi, this is us, we don't know what we're doing but we want to do this. I'm sure you've had many people call you. We're not the first. Um, own 
be humble about it, but own your weaknesses and just say, and then find somebody who just says, no problem, I've got you. I know, you know, we can help. And then just say, I don't know, please help me. Yeah. And people are really, really forthcoming with stuff. I'm just blown away by how good this finish is, you know? It's amazing. Right. If you're drawn to a boat and it's chalky, uh, this was quite chalky oh, yeah? before we had it done. And it's cost it over two thousand, two and a half thousand dollars yeah. to have somebody come and professionally do it. But it looks brand new. It looks so brand don't new. Don't be put off by chalk. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so you got it, you got it back? From experience that it comes back. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody will find their perfect boat no. that doesn't need some sort of modifying because they're rarely set up for liveaboard. And if you're lucky enough to find one that already comes with all the solar you need and all the batteries and all the water maker and all the laundry, grab it. Yeah. Because it won't be too many. And you just gotta stick with it. I think that's the biggest thing because we do see a lot of cruisers that go out and they buy a boat and it becomes really difficult. And it is hard. Like it's hard work and you can get beaten down some days. You don't want to continue. You want to go because you're seasick. Your toilet's broken. You have to like, you know, you don't have any fuel. And you're like, what are we doing? It's hot. It's sticky. There's flies that are biting me. This sucks. But then tomorrow you get to go out and like dive a beautiful reef or catch a fish or do whatever. And you realize why you're doing it again. And it makes it worth it. You have to push through those times. Because if you don't, you'll never get to the good stuff. And you'll just feel like it's all kind of for nothing. So. You will not know most of what you need to do before you do it. This is not one of those things that you can think about it all ahead. No. Like, I'm a bit of a planner and I like to figure it all out before I start a project. That will never happen. No. You're the just going to have to go. Be a part of the adventure. Just do it. Yeah. Just, just start and then figure out tomorrow the next thing and so on and so forth. Because mm -hmm. it's a very big leap. But it's doable. We did it. Yeah. And um, we're still alive. And we're still together. It's two good things. So there you go. <laughs> score, score. <laughs> So guys, we're getting ready to take off here. Do you have a sign off that you guys do? Anything uh, for us to get the heck out of here? Welcome. Thank you for having a look at our boat. And so we started off with not a clue. And then we tried something new. I can't <laughs> have anything. <laughs> that one's there going in there for sure. <laughs> Until we meet again. Perfect. <laughs>